Behind many bad or disappointing movies lies the potential for greatness. I don't know how to put up with all this crap. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst movies that deserve a remake. Give it up, Ivy. I've studied all your moves. Yeah, I studied this! <laughs> <laughs> For this list, we're looking at films that were largely disappointing upon their initial release, whether it was critically, commercially, or both, and thus deserve another lease on life. Many of the films here are based upon existing intellectual properties, which made their cinematic stumbling all the more painful for those dying to see these stories properly told. Note also that a film is still eligible even if there are rumors of a reboot, remake, spin-offs, and so on surrounding it. I'm not good yet. <gasps> Number 10. Aragon. Better to ask forgiveness than permission. The first entry in the Inheritance Cycle fantasy novel series was self-published by the still-teenaged author Christopher Paolini and his family back in 2002. Did someone mention flying? Are you ready to try again, Dragon Rider? It quickly gained an ardent fan base and received the big budget movie treatment only a few years later, to a balanced sentiment of both excitement and skepticism. Come, taste the blood of your dragon! Let's finish this! Although the author himself approved of the translation, critics were not so forgiving with many accusing the film's story of being too derivative of the Star Wars and the Lord of the Rings franchises, while also remarking on the inexperience of first-time director Stefan Fangmeier. Without fear, there cannot be courage. But when we are together, it is our enemies who should be afraid. We're hoping another stab at an adaptation would be able to highlight what fans had loved about it in the first place. I'm sorry. That's all there is. Number 9. Catwoman <laughs> Selena Kyle, also known as Catwoman, is a great character, yet no one has quite been able to present the smart, sexy, and dangerous burglar properly on the big screen. Well, not since Tim Burton, anyway. Meow. Case in point, this 2004 bomb which, by all accounts, has to be one of the worst comic book adaptations ever filmed. Game over. Guess what? It's overtime. Halle Berry stars as Patience Phillips, a new incarnation of the anti-heroine in what is essentially another origin story. You died, but you were reborn. Oh, you're crazy. You are a crazy cat lady. Unfortunately, a daft script, exaggerated performances, and some of the most cringeworthy CGI imaginable make this cat's claws utterly harmless. Catwoman. Mm -hmm. You heard of her? Oh yeah. Ha. Black leather. Whip. But hey, at least cats have nine lives. And that means they have at least a few more chances to revamp this feline femme fatale. You're just a scared little girl playing dress up. Number 8. Alexander Conquer your fear! And I promise you, you will conquer death! Granted, director Oliver Stone may have already inundated the market with his disappointing 2004 historical drama, but we say that there's still a demand out there for the story of Alexander the Great to be told. And told well. A king isn't born Alexander. He's made by steel and by suffering. Sure, Colin Farrell may not have completely convinced in the title role, but Stone's film wasn't entirely without merit, telling an epic tale during an era when films like Gladiator and Troy were still fresh in people's minds. How we all suffer. Your father, mine. They all came to the end of their time, and in the end, when it's over, all that matters is what you've done. Maybe instead of yet another re-edit of the Oliver Stone version, though, some other up-and-coming director could add a fresh spin to the story of this intriguing, iconic world conqueror. Never will there be an Alexander like you, Alexander the Great. Number 7. Resident Evil You're all going to die down here. 
Although the 2000 film adaptation of Resident Evil wasn't particularly liked by critics, it did spawn countless sequels. You like that, don't you, huh? Huh? You like the way it tastes, don't you? In recent years, however, interest in this cinematic franchise has sharply declined. I don't want to be one of those things. Walking around without a soul. What could kickstart Resident Evil once again? We say a remake with practical effects, makeup, and monsters, as opposed to the tired, computer-generated effects that were used by the later films. In a day and age where old-school horror techniques are coming back in fashion with younger directors, this could be just the boost Resident Evil needs to once again rise to the occasion. You're gonna have to work for your meal! Getting rid of Alice and focusing on characters from the video games may also help. I don't know what we had, but it's over. <laughs> Number six, Pearl Harbor. There's nothing stronger than the heart of a volunteer, Jack. Michael Bay drew critical ire when he decided to adapt the 1941 Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor into a romantic dramatization starring Ben Affleck, Kate Beckinsale, and Josh Hartnett. I think World War II just hit us! Many cried foul at the film's historical inaccuracies and love triangle subplot, while others focused on Bay's penchant for relentless explosions. He's a dead! Pearl Harbor did reap significant financial rewards at the box office, however, and we think the story could still be done justice if placed in the hands of someone capable of balancing both action and storytelling in the proper ratio. Not anxious to die, sir. Just anxious to matter. Number five, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. What are you? <laughs> I'm complicated. <laughs> Based on the celebrated comic book series, this was another case of Hollywood not properly following the source material, preferring instead to create a straightforward, big-budget action film following Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill's tale of fantastic fictional characters from history. They're indestructible! No, just armor-plated. Truth be told, the film works fine in that respect. But fans and critics alike still balked at the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and plans for a franchise quickly fizzled out. Bon voyage. 2015 first unearthed rumors of a reboot, however, so the time may yet still come for Alan Quartermain, Dr. Jekyll, Tom Sawyer, and Captain Nemo to rebuild their league on the big or small screen. Try your pistol! I walk a different path. <laughs> Number four, Super Mario Brothers. Excuse me, Miss Lady, can you tell me where I am? Yeah, you're in my way! Some films seem destined to garner a cult following, regardless of critical or commercial disdain. Super Mario Brothers is one of those films. You know, boys, it's very dangerous here in this neighborhood. You uh, shouldn't wander around without a weapon. Yeah. You got one? No. All right. This very loose adaptation of the classic Nintendo game first hit theaters in 1993. How many Mario's are there between the two of you? There's three. There's, there's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Bizarre costumes, flashy action sequences, and wacky performances abound in Super Mario Bros. Yet its tenuous link to the video game series didn't win it many favors with fans at the time. You know the law, Toad! Hey, wait a minute! You can't arrest a guy for just singing a song! Although we're not sure if anything can quite match the head-scratching weirdness that is Super Mario Brothers, we'd love to see some inventive filmmaker out there try his hand at remaking this one. I'm not riding with you anymore. Okay, you ride. Number three, The Last Airbender. Fans have been known to get up in arms when a film adaptation misses the mark. All airbenders should be dead. Kill them! Firebenders! Put their guns on! Nothing quite touches the vehemently negative reaction to M. Night Shyamalan's take on the animated series Avatar The Last Airbender. The Fire Nation is up to something. I have to go back now. Not only did fans react negatively to the casting of Caucasian actors in what should have been Asian roles, 
But the Avatar community and others also commented on the quality of acting, story, and special effects, all of which were almost universally pan. I will stop them. Even if you've never watched the show, it's clear by this point that Avatar fans deserve a proper big screen adventure with their heroes. I don't think that's a good idea. Number two, Spawn. You're dead. D E D dead. <laughs> The late 90s didn't exactly foster the same comic-friendly cinema climate we enjoy today. You're wrong. Michael Jai White stars as creator Todd McFarlane's betrayed military man who sells his soul to the devil in order to return to the woman he loves, only to find out that she has remarried his best friend in the five years since his death. I still love one. Put her in the past. It's the only way you can be free. We think that a character with such a tragic backstory needs to make a serious comeback. Not to mention the fact that Spawn himself is practically the definition of a badass, as he fights demons and devils for his very soul. Make this one happen, Hollywood, and do it right. Spawn is funny, he's our man, if you can't kill him, no one can. Yay! Spawn is the peak to the age of the war, as to the peak to the age of the war, no funny. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. This is our home now. This is not home. Home is where your parents put you to bed at night, where they teach you to ride a bike, or where they get all choked up on your first day of school. This is not home. You lead the life you live, you think you can just go on a little Roman holiday and they wouldn't notice. Just jump all over the place, jump, 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 jump. And nothing's gonna happen? I can't explain it, but I, I think we're inside an American spaceship. It gets better. Number one, the Golden Compass. Is that all? Coming out in the wake of the Chronicles of Narnia, Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings franchises, The Golden Compass has been described as one of the most disappointing adaptations ever. But the ruling power, fearing any truth but their own, destroyed these devices and forbade the very mention of dust. Shying away from Philip Pullman's source material, it was criticized for blunting the anti-Catholic sentiment within the film while religious organizations complained about how said themes stemmed from the source material. Prove to me that you are a demon. Ask me something only you know. Hmm. How did I become king? However, with several years having gone by since its release, perhaps it'll soon be the right time to reevaluate once again and attempt to bring Pullman's tale to life. Mrs. Coulter, what's that? That is the magisterial seat, Lyra. Fingers crossed that the BBC can do his dark materials justice on the small screen. Yes, that is all. That is all. Do you agree with our list? You don't seem so fun to fish into me. Which bad movies do you think deserve some redemption? Give me an answer so I can go home. For more thought-provoking top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Do you know how hard I've been working on this?